here and welcome to the first homework video that you're going to be seeing as part of this class. Uh, this first one is not yet about history content exactly. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to talk about behavior in the classroom, which is a really unique thing to talk about this year because we're going to be all online. And so we're going to dig into what that means and what that looks like and what I expect from you and what you can expect from me this year. So some of this is what we talked about in class, and this video is gonna cover uh, a review of what we talked about in class for any folks who might have missed that. This is a great opportunity for them to see what it was that we talked about. And then I'm gonna go into some more depth uh, so that you have some more things to think about before you come back to class. So first of all, why are we talking about this? Um, we are talking about a shared vocabulary about behavior because shared understandings like that build culture. It's really, really difficult to know that we're talking about the same thing, that we're going towards the same goals, we have the same ideas, unless we set some definitions for ourselves. Um, also, I can set all the rules that I want, but unless I actually convince you that this way of looking at things is worthwhile, um, then it's not clear that it's worthwhile for you. And then we won't be able to build this really tight-knit community. And that's all the more important online. So here's some things that I grew up hearing. I literally had someone say this to me. I expect you all to be independent, innovative, critical thinkers who will do exactly as I say. Now he was kidding, I think he was kidding, but uh, think of how maybe hypocritical or, or contradictory that is to be independent, critical thinkers, but to do exactly as somebody says, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, also there's this expression, spare the rod, spoil the child. Um, this is the idea that you're maybe supposed to use some sort of punishment to convince people to do what's right so that they won't do what's wrong. But actually, this expression refers to the rod that shepherds would use to guide the heads of the sheep at the front of the, the flock to help all the other sheep kind of follow them. So it wasn't punishment. It was guiding. It was adding sort of wisdom uh, to the person who other people looked to in the flock. So a lot of the way we usually talk about how to behave and how to be is really rooted in this idea of either rewarding people or punishing people. And I have some bad news if that's the way you think of it. Um, that doesn't work. So when in my first year of teaching, that is definitely the way I looked at it. I used a lot of different rewards and a lot of different sort of punishments so that I could get people to do what I was saying. And it kind of worked. I mean, I got them to sit down in their chairs. But as you might have experienced growing up and going through school, um, it doesn't work in the long run unless the students really respect you as a person and believe that they are there to do something worthwhile. So I was staying at a monastery uh, one summer on a long road trip, which is a much longer story I will tell at some other point. But uh, while I was there, I read a whole bunch of books. Uh, and one of them was this book called Punished by Rewards by Alfie Cohn, who puts together a whole bunch of research on how motivation to do the right thing actually works. And in particular, how you can think about motivation and motivating yourself in a classroom to get what you actually should be getting out of a classroom, like what's worthwhile to you and how I as a teacher can then help you to do that. So here are my core beliefs. And I'm telling you this up front because as with all things in history, I am but one point of view on this. And you will find other teachers who don't believe the same thing as me. But when you're in my classroom, I use these beliefs, which I've thought about a lot, to shape how we're gonna talk and interact about these things. So learning and behavior are actually really closely connected because you need at least a baseline of behavior of everybody in the room so we can actually like do stuff. And then also your behavior is gonna shape how you interact with stuff you're gonna learn. So. Um, I believe those things there. I'm not going to read them all out because that's not good practice for a presentation, but I'm going to point out a couple key things. Uh, you learn when you are motivated to, and motivation takes both of us. I'll provide as much motivation through showing you how stuff is cool and also constructing a classroom where I don't kill your love of learning by forcing you to take a bunch of multiple choice tests, but you have to give me the benefit of the doubt, and you have to find what's interesting and engaging about the things that we are doing. So it's really a two-way street there. And then over here about the behavior, here's some key ideas. One, uh, behavior is just the visible stuff. So if all I ever do is try and control behavior, I'm not actually getting at what's motivating that behavior inside. And often that's more important. Uh, just think in your mind back to a time when you got in trouble for doing something and you felt like getting in trouble wasn't justified. Like that was unfair that I got in trouble for that because I really did it for this reason. 
And that may have been entirely legitimate. That may have been true. So what I care a lot about as a teacher um, is I try to help you shape your behavior in ways so that what you are doing internally to make decisions reflects the best behavior coming out of you. And if it doesn't, if I if there's a mismatch, what I as a teacher try to do is I try to talk to you about it. But there are situations where that might not work, which we'll talk about in a second. So now this is the shared vocabulary that we talked about in class today. And I'm not gonna go over in too much depth, but remember there are four levels. Those four levels are anarchy, bullying, conformity, and thriving. The lowest two levels there, if you are acting on an anarchy level, that's putting other people in danger because you're literally acting in a way where the rules don't matter. Um, and that may involve doing things like, I don't know, flipping over a desk or something where you could legitimately hurt someone um, or hurt someone's feelings. So anarchy, I have to actually come in as a teacher and stop you and use my power as a teacher in order to do that. Bullying, similar situation, um, that's where you know what you're doing. You're in fact manipulating the rules and breaking norms and expectations to bother other people, bully other people, get what you want at the expense of other people. And again, in that case, I as a teacher have to step in with my power and stop that because that's a danger to the people around you and honestly a danger to yourself as well. Um, so then the baseline that you have to be as a student is conformity. You have to be considerate, you gotta follow the rules, you gotta at least sort of follow the peer pressure of the other people who are following the rules. Um, but you might also be following negative peer pressure and conforming there. So conformity isn't even always good. As long as you're following the classroom norms, you're probably okay, but the norms of the classroom isn't the only pressure you experience as a student, I'm sure. So. You are at that level doing it because of external motivation. The stuff outside of you, the rewards, the punishments, the pressures, um, those things are forcing you to do it. It might even just be you're doing it because you want me to say what a good job you're doing. That's a reward. Or if I re withhold that from you, that's a punishment. So that's, that's that level. Thriving, uh, that's where you are actually doing stuff because you want to. You've developed self-discipline. You're taking the initiative to do stuff. You see your responsibility as a student and you're following that. And you know that part of your responsibility as a student is about how you treat other people. So you're engaging in intentional respectfulness. And that's all coming from you because you see yourself as a good student. You believe yourself to be a good person and you know that you want to learn and like get ahead in life. And so that's why you're doing it. Not for any other reason, just because of those things. So during the day, whether we're in the classroom or out of the classroom, I might ask you, what level is your behavior currently on? And if I asked you that and you're like totally breaking all the rules and ignoring everything, you're just doing whatever you wanted to do, you would have to say, I'm on anarchy. And realize when I ask you that question, you're like, oh, I'm on anarchy. This is Mr. Dolson telling me to stop. Because that is what I mean when I ask you that. Sometimes I might say, see you doing something where you are bullying another student, using your power to get what you want or to hurt that other person intentionally. And again, I'm gonna step in and ask, what level is your behavior on currently? And you'll have to say bullying. Ooh, Mr. Dolson, uh, I realize I'm on bullying. I'm gonna stop, I'm sorry. Because that's what I wanna see from you. You reflecting and recognizing what level you're on. Because if I just tell you, then you're never gonna actually learn to recognize when it's happening because it may well be happening without you really thinking about it. So you might find yourself, oh, I'm conforming, I'm following the rules, why did you even ask me? I might ask you what level is your behavior on when you look like you're doing the right thing because I wanna actually know whether you are on thriving or conformity. I want you to reflect and think, am I doing this because of some reward or punishment Am I doing this because of peer pressure or just because I'm not thinking about it? Or am I doing this because I have a goal, I have a purpose, I know where I'm headed and I know how to get there and I'm doing this for that reason. And I actually wanna know, I legitimately wanna know because I cannot see as the teacher the difference between a C and a T. Can't tell the difference between conformity and thriving. Only you know the answer to that question. So I actually care about you as a person and I want you to grow in this class. And it is my belief, like I talked about earlier, that the only way that happens is through reflection. And that is the whole purpose of me asking, what level are you on? 
It's so that you recognize what's happening. So why does this matter? This matters because we aren't in the classroom. <laughs> We're online, so you're going to be managing all of your time, or at least the vast majority of your time. I can't be right next to you to support you in making good choices like I would usually do. Um, there's, so that means that I, I can't be there to be like, hey, what level are you on? When I see you doing something that's maybe on bullying or anarchy even. So you have to know that. You have to come to understand that. So this is really important. We're going to really talk about this a lot. Um, then there's also lots of spaces online I can't directly observe. You've all got devices, I am sure. And you probably all know one another well enough to be in contact. So there are spaces I can't observe. So being a good person in those spaces, being kind, thoughtful, uh, giving others the benefit of the doubt, that's on you. And I'm going to help you get better at that over time, especially being conscious, aware of it. Um, and then also, we only get to interact in limited ways and only when you initiate the conversation a lot of times by like sending me an email or a message on Schoology. So that means that you have to have that initiative be on that thriving level where you're not just doing the minimum, you're actually like reaching out to learn more or ask a question. So I'm here to support you, but it's really up to you to learn and to be kind. So here's some key do's and don'ts. Notice there's a lot more do's than don'ts. First of all, uh, let's talk about the don'ts. Uh, don't ask, what will I get if I do blank during this year? Because it's not about that. And don't act on a bullying or anarchy level. Sometimes you might not know you're doing it, and I will help you recognize those times. But don't ever intentionally do it. And then do find what matters to you about what we're learning and demand more relevant stuff from me. You are going to have to advocate for yourself uh, to get me to include more things that matter to you. Don't just let me like tell you only the stuff I think is cool. Like I want to make it relevant for you. Also be good for goodness sake. I think that's the thing that like Santa Claus says. Uh, yeah, it's in a song. So uh, be good literally because being good is being good. It's, it's kind of a circular argument, but basically I believe that you want to be a good person and I'm here to help you know what that looks like and then act into that. And then also because you are learning, especially in this online space, what all of that looks like, be kind to yourself. Give yourself grace so that, you know, you have the opportunity to make mistakes and recover from those mistakes. And I will give you the space to do that and help make sure that everyone knows that that's what's expected of you. Um, and please give others the benefit of the doubt because they are learning, you are learning, and we will all make mistakes <laughs> during this time because it's unprecedented what we are doing. And that's our whole presentation today on this. You've been asked a couple of questions during this time. I hope you had a good time uh, watching this first video and I will see you in class when next we meet.